So time to pull the chuck. I need to take a look to see what's underneath it. Is it rusted? Is that causing swelling or pitting? Is it need reground? And it was devastating. To see the underside of this was just gutting. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe this whole thing was a mistake. And then I thought, no, let's see what we can make of this. So angle grinder, a wire wheel. I built up an enclosure to try to contain and minimize the dust. I had an exhaust system going, a vacuum going, wearing a mask. And it actually cleaned up pretty nicely. The table itself does have some pitting. Uh, we end up grinding that down a little bit, not all of it gone. And then the backside of the chuck, it was a lot more bark than bite. But again, as I started cleaning that up, I thought, okay, this may be something salvageable here. The grinding wheel. Take a look at this passage. The reason for dressing a wheel. The ideal grinding wheel would be self-sharpening. It's abrasive, grain size, bond, structure, operating speed, as well as the speed and nature of the work and other variables would be such that the stresses on the cutting points of the grinding wheel would cause them to be fractured just before they became dull enough to glaze. They would thus offer new, fresh, sharp cutting points and affect a new cutting tool or if their substance was so far gone that the bond had a tenuous hold, they would be torn out and new grains, slightly deeper set, would come into action. That is one of the most beautiful passages I've ever read about understanding more about grinding wheels. And holy cow, there is a lot to understand. Long story short, grinding wheels are self-sharpening to a point. They tear out uh, the old material and new comes in, except they tend to load up. And Here's the problem I've got right now. I'm really happy with how this, this project is going. It could have gone really, really badly. Table cleaned up pretty well, but I couldn't get the T-nuts. Uh, three of the four T-nuts wouldn't come out. So cut off wheel on a pneumatic grinder, split the T-nut down the center. That combination of loosening up some pressure, probably putting some heat into it, allowing it to collapse, got them out. I swept it and I've got two thou or so of run out and that's atrocious. Ends up it's a little bit trickier to dress the wheel when you don't have the magnetic base. So just threw a strap claim on it, just had to pay attention to where the nut was. Well, hopefully the wheel is dressed. We'll take a look. I can totally see a different grind pattern, uh, which just tells me that the wheel is cutting differently after being dressed. That's really cool. I'm marking zero on my down feed dial now, so I kind of know this is my zero point. We'll see how far down we go from here. You can see it's cutting more on the ends, and that's where I was getting the most run out when we swept the chuck in. Another foul. This is reassuring because the fact that the table is sparking, cutting less in the middle tells me I just didn't grind enough. So I'm not too worried yet that we've got a big mechanical problem with this machine. I think it just, the table needs flatten. I hope, I hope. Much better looking uh, table grind. And you know, now that I think about it, I was grinding with the wheel loaded up. I, I suspected that, I kind of knew that. Another foul. Um, that may have put some heat into it, which is gonna be bad. That's gonna cause warp, so that, that's probably why it's a no-no to grind with any sort of a load or build up or glaze on the chuck, on the wheel. I'm getting a more even grind across the X travel as well now, which makes me happy. It's heavier there though. Oh. Let it spark out a couple passes. I'm taking off too much, especially uh, on something as critical as the table where I don't want to put too much heat into it to cause it to warp. I want to do a really nice job grinding it in.
let's check table flatness the right way, which is using an accurately ground or scrape. I think this is the ground one parallel resting on two points. I believe these are called best soul points, Bessie points. Need to go look that up. And then I've got a mag base resting on a one, two, three block. And in this case, a mid to one micron indicator. And we're sweeping left to right is the parallel flat reference to the table or more importantly, vice versa is the table flat relative to a parallel. I still seem to get a little bit of travel at the end, but you're talking about, this is a one micron. So each tick I'll mark on this is four tenths of a tenth. I'm dead flat until the very end I the taper off. Maybe a few tenths, so I'm, we're gonna put the chuck on. Grind the top of the chuck and we're gonna see how we go. And always pull it off and grind more. Somebody yell at me in the comments if I'm putting on way too much. <clears throat> chuck is back on the table. It is not bolted down. This, though, is the wrong way to measure. I've got the mag base locked to the spindle housing indicator here. Zero it out. I just want to show you. This is a half foul indicator. So it's half a foul. It's back to zero. Negative one foul. So that would show about a foul and a half of run out. Remember from our Job Shop Metrology Tips video card here, some good lessons. This is not even a perfect setup. I'm just trying to do a quick and dirty here to show the comparison. We're at zero, one thou, two thou, chip in the plate, three thou. And we go back two thou, one thou, zero. So this plate, let's see here, is high. Well, it's confusing. The indicator is going high. What that really means is it's dished in, I think, because you think about it, if this, you see me, yeah. If the indicator reads more pressure, that means the base is falling down to increase pressure on the needle. So we're dished, we're dished in this way. Let's clamp it down lightly. I think only about 10 foot pounds on each screw and skim, dress our wheel and skim past the chuck. That was 13 pounds, not much. Dressing the grinding wheel as open as I can, so as fast as I can to clean off. And so we have an open grind um, or an open wheel because these soft chucks load up the wheel quickly. I've also since learned that we really should be dressing the wheel with the diamond at an angle and we should be rotating the diamond each time we dress it. So that's on my to-do list of tools to build and processes to get used to. Folks, huge progress, super excited. Take a look what's going on. Richard King noticed that there are outriggers on this machine, two there and two there. So what do those do? Well, you've got your two Y-axis V-ways right here. And this table just sits down with gravity, unlike a traditional uh, dovetailed gib machine or the Haas that has linear rails where the table's secured on, this thing is literally just sitting on with gravity. So when the table gets out to the far end, it is possible or it will tip over. I don't believe you have these outriggers on smaller grinders, even the 12 by 24s, but you do on the 16 by 32s. There is no mention in the manual of, about adjusting them, and I don't even have the manual for this machine, but I have the manual for the newer machines, and sure enough, they're called out as eccentric cams. The problem that I had was a dish in the table, and it was giving me a pretty flat area in the center and about four tenths run out on each end. And, then the, it, and that may have to just be that way, but I'm excited that we now know how to adjust it and what's going on. So what I did was I adjust, I loosened the screws and I adjusted the eccentric cams when tested with shim stock to lift this roller bearing up off of its track. And I got all four of them clear. And then I had indicators on each end, just like I have this one, I have one on the other side as well. And I measured the table sag at the each end and it went from maybe four to seven tenths all the way up to three thou, which is great. 
now I'm learning something. So what I did was I brought each of the four back into play, walking them in. And I think I've got it as good as I'm going to get it. So right now, and unfortunately this one is only a, a half thou indicator, but it's a little more than half a thou um, as measured with this one. Not perfect. I had my tenths indicator over here and the same thing, getting about four to five tenths of sag. Now that doesn't necessarily mean four to five tenths uh, right out of here because, and I don't know whether it's worse or better. I hope it's better. So then the question is, do you regrind the chuck? Well, the one I'm measuring here is not normally a very good measurement because that's just saying that what you grind is what you get. So you can have huge warp edges and it's gonna follow those here. But what this tells me right now is that because I'm getting a variation, that tells me we've changed the geometry of the relationship of the table to the spindle. And it does probably make sense to regrind. And in fact, if we take a look, we're seeing that a little bit of rise on the end. So I think I have actually improved the levelness or flatness of the travel of the table such that we're gonna improve this a little. Man, two tenths would be so much better than four tenths if I can get it there. So big shout out to both Richard King right there. Uh, we're in the middle of our scraping class and Spencer Webb for helping uh, on the surface grinder here and troubleshoot and be the detective and put our indicators into certain locations and check for wear and play and slop and gibbs. Holy cow, that's what's awesome. Let me throw the parallel up here and I'll show you the other tests we're doing. What's interesting is a minute ago or an hour ago, I was getting a lake that had about a four thou low spot in the middle. Now that has changed and it has changed because those outriggers have changed the shape of this table, which is so funny. This is a 10,000 pound cast iron machine. Most people would describe this machine as a beast, well-built, rugged, solid, blah, blah, blah. But you know, that's one of the things you kind of learn hanging out with Richard and talking about how these, you know, he was talking about how these outriggers are also something that's seen on big Giddings and Lewis horizontal boring machines where you have to dial them in. Um, I also am guilty of still of having this machine on too many concrete pads. So after I do all this, I'm still gonna move the machine. Um, and you're welcome to yell at me right now for uh, that, but you know what? It is what it is. Okay, so plus a few tenths, plus half a tenth, plus six or seven, eight, nine tenths there, and coming back to zero. Do that again, Z uh, a couple tenths positive, half a thou, eight, nine tenths, thou, and we'll move back towards zero as we approach the end, or two tenths. So I'll be right back. I'm grinding this chuck in one last time. Let's see where it ends up. Folks, so we still have some problems, but I'm so happy right now. We figured out so much on this machine. I feel so much more confident in what we're doing. Sweeping left to right, we're getting about two ten thousandths of an inch. I was at four before. I feel so much better about two to me than four. There's just something about it. Two tenths is like, oh, that's so hard much. Four tenths, I'm like, oh man, almost half a thou. Unfortunately, um, we've it worsened it front to back. I think there's maybe up to five tenths run out in Y. We're gonna see in a second. Um, and that may have been with how I adjusted the outriggers. I don't know. Um, but at this point, I, I re, you know, we re the chuck. Uh, we're gonna do the five block test. So let's set up five, one, two, three blocks. Actually, link in the video description. These are eBay super cheap and they're perfect in this example because I want something that's uh, the same height when I start with. I don't want to just grab five pieces of scrap. So let's grind. Sweet. Folks, the big moment. We ground five, one, two, three blocks placed on the four corners and the center. Let's measure them up and see what we got. We'll start with the center block and we're going to and we're going to reference the height gauge on that. So that's zero. First block. Two tenths. Second block, this is the front left. 1.5 tenths. Ba front right. 
not even a ten. Holy cow. Back right, under 50 millions. I'll check the center again just to make sure it repeats close to zero. Yep, one, under two tenths of a tenth, 16 millions. Oh my gosh, folks, I, I, uh, four tenths, honestly, I would have been happy with four tenths given where we were with that grinder when we started. According to this, I'm getting at most two and a half tenths run out across about 30 inches. That is incredible. Now I say according to this because I'm not sure I believe this is perfect. Do I think it's pretty good? Yes, but there's so many factors in error when it comes to metrology that I'm learning about and learning to appreciate. Uh, we did this actually, I did this test during the scraping class and I couldn't film, there was too much going on, but we did it. I flipped the blocks, I ground them again, and the test repeated. So I've done this twice now, which gives me even more confidence. On the flip side, I have so much more to learn. You know, I'm starting to appreciate, I remember videos from Tom Lipton a year ago when folks did this five point test and Tom had mentioned that one guy, I think was in within 50 millionths. So that's half a tenth. Now it was a smaller machine as well, but I cannot tell you how happy I am. Thank you again to the folks at the, at the scraping class and Richard King. That was such a great time to focus on this machine and learn. And I wanna see how it, how it goes. Does it hold up? Um, do those outriggers need moved? I wanna learn more about measuring flatness and thickness and parallelism and understanding what we're doing. I've got a new grinding wheel coming in, which is a big step. That's the sort of next step is to get that known to, to improve and understand the dressing and what wheel we're using. But folks, what an awesome outcome. To make something flat within a few tenths across a larger area is pretty darn cool. Folks, I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned. Take care, see you soon.